Today we will be looking at the 1995 Batman Forever Batmobile by Ravel. But before getting into all of it, I'm Trevor and welcome to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Picture this, you've just discovered a model car you know nothing about. Or perhaps you've owned these model cars in the past and you're just here to reminisce. Either way, we feature classic plastic, television and movie cars, domestic kits, imports, new releases, and model kits made by companies lost to time. If that sounds like a channel that you totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and check out the 1995 Batman Forever Batmobile. The Ravel Batman Forever Batmobile is a skill level 2 model kit for ages 10 and up and will require paint and glue. The features for this model kit are on the side of the box. We have a detailed cockpit and positionable tail pieces for a really amazing model kit. And on this side of the box we can see some of the other offerings from Ravel at this time period including the Batwing and the Batboat both from the same movie. Now before we begin looking at plastic pieces I like to go over the instruction sheet for those people that are missing it or just to show how the basic assembly and the model kit goes together. So uh, let's open this up and see what we've got. Panel 1 starts us off by saying note. Refer to back page for assembly instructions before beginning this model. That's really interesting. I've never actually seen that before. So let's take a look here. It says first, you've got the top power plant here. You've got the body. Then you have the left side power plant and the right side power plant. Now these will show between the ribs on the body and the open area up in the hood. Down here we have our right side grill and our left side grill as well as the center grill. Here it says modelers may wish to apply a light wash of thin down flat black paint to the chrome parts that fit to the inside of the body for a more realistic effect. Apply to parts number 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. So those would be all your chrome components. Panel 2 shows our interior assembly and you begin with the left steering column and the right steering column. Once you glue those two together you have the completed column here. And there we've got our instrument panel which glues into place. It is a chrome bezel housing. And here we've got our gauges which are decals as shown here. And then we also have our bat steering wheel and it says to paint the bars silver and the inner and the outer ring flat black. Once this is all together you will have your completed steering assembly. We carry on with our interior assembly steps by taking our completed steering column and gluing it up inside this notch underneath the dashboard top, which then will drop into our interior tub. We also have our shifter lever going in here on the center console. It says to paint some of these components here with some silver paint, and which also carries on down here. We have a decal going into this area. And then we've got an arrow which moves us into this zone here, which shows our seats being put into place. And then that carries the interior down here into our body, where you glue it up along these ridges, much like an aircraft interior. Panel 3 shows our front and rear wheel suspension assembly. So here we've got our upper front suspension, and then our lower front suspension with the A-arms down here. We have our inner wheels there and there, our front tires, our outer wheel, and our decal with the bat logo on it. And then here we, sh we see our completed front axle being dropped down onto this chassis. And then we also have our rear axle down here at the bottom of the page. And this again has the rear suspension axle molded in, or that clips on with these wheel clips. So you want to make sure there's no seam lines in here and here or else your wheel backs will lock on. Do not use glue here either. We also have our rear tire being glued in place on that inner wheel. There's our outer wheel disc again with the bat logo and all these would connect together and then this glues into the back end of the chassis. Panel 4 shows our body assembly. So here we have the completed body assembly and the chassis being glued together. And then we move into this panel where we see our two headlights being glued onto the front of the car. So here we have our reflector as well as the headlight bezel and the lens. So you do this twice and then put them in place. 
Panel 5 shows our front fender assembly, so here we have our front fender support being attached to the body. And then we have the two-piece fenders, so we've got our left outer fender and our left inner fender, as well as the right outer and right inner, and then they will attach to the completed body just like this. Panel 6 shows our body rear assembly. Here we have the upper body panel being glued to the lower rear body panel. And then we've got our inner tailpipe, which is chromed, as well as our outer tailpipe, which will glue on the end here, which is also chromed. So this would be your jet exhaust right in here. And it also shows to paint inside with the gold. So that's really cool. And then down here we see our completed assembly being glued into the back of the body. And then there's this little arrow down here, which then moves us down the instruction sheet. So here we have our completed assembly, getting the right rear fender mounted, as well as the left rear fender mounted onto the body. Panel 7 gives us our options here. We can have the open fin assembly or the closed fin assembly. So what it's showing here is to cement on the tabs down below if you want to have the rear fins open. Or if you want them closed, you remove the tabs and then, I do believe, you just glue right along the seam here and then glue it onto the car. As we move down on the instruction sheet, we can see that that is exactly what you do. So you've got the completed open assembly dropping into the slot here, or the closed assembly which also will glue into that slot area there. Panel 8 shows our final assembly, and here you have the canopy getting the right window and left window put in place. It also has the split windshield, much like a car from the 40s and 50s. And then here the canopy will drop onto the body. Now you do have the option of the canopy closed or the canopy open, which would just be the canopy being moved ahead on the body. Now remember when we were about to look at the instructions and there was a little box that said read the back panel? This is what they're talking about. Read this before you begin. Study the assembly drawings and such and such. We also have our symbols like do not cement, repeat two times, remove and throw away, decal application, or optional parts like the question mark. And then we have our paint color callouts in three co uh, languages. Pardon me. We've got flat black, flat white, silver, and gold. Riddle me this, Batman. In the movie Batman Forever, a Batman faces two villains, one of them being the Riddler and the other being Two-Face. If you can name the original name of Two-Face as well as his wife, you will be posted first in the comment section down below. Good luck, Sleuths! <laughs> Here we have the body in plastic. And again, this is a really nice looking model from Ravel. So there we've got that nice, almost like a spiderweb type effect in the front there, which is really cool. Now I do believe you're supposed to paint silver in here. I could be mistaken. Don't take that at face value. <laughs> Look at the nice ribs on here. It's almost looking like a, a skeleton you'd find washed up on a beach or something. But it is quite cool. Very, very unique. Turning it over, there are some mold marks under here, but I don't know how much those are going to affect anything. Maybe the ones up around the dashboard, you can always get rid of them with a number 16 hobby blade and a little bit of sandpaper. But overall, I do believe this is a nice looking body for our Batmobile. Next up, we have our chassis pan, and we're looking at it from the top. So here you can see the inner wheel fenders for the back wheels, as well as the little points for our front suspension. And it is quite an aerodynamic looking shape, almost like a Formula One type car. Look at underneath all this great detail. You have these exhaust pipes that bend out down here and also go through the rear axle. And again, really cool detail. So this would be that big jet engine or whatever's going on in there. You will have to remove this little piece here and then sand it down. Actually, it looks like zero seam lines. So how does this hook up to the body? Well, easily just drops into place, much like that. You will get a good fit in here once you get it all figured out. I'm not too sure how it's going to go, but at any rate, again, you can see that this will mat up quite nicely and will make for a really wonderful looking Batmobile model. Looking at the parts trees, we have our canopy top right here, as well as our interior tub and the front suspension component. There's our left and right hand side steering column and the bat steering wheel. 
So let's just bring this up into the camera to start with. Again, look at how nice that, that cockpit is. Really cool. The canopy, I should say, not the cockpit. That's where they're sitting. There are mold marks up under here, so again, sand them off with your hobby knife and your uh, sandpaper. So what we have here is the bottoms of the seats. And this is a really tight interior, as you can see. It's very narrow. I don't know how Batman and Robin would squeeze into this. It's like almost more narrower than a Model T. Uh, there's all our instrument panel and everything going right up in the center. Must apologize because the black plastic is kind of hard to pick up, you know, with the detailing. But overall, it does look really neat. I like the high back here and just how low they're sitting also into the car. It's really unique. Now let's take a look at that bat steering column. You can see the bat symbol on the steering wheel right in there, as well as the details that make up the column. It almost looks like a little tiny, like a V6 engine or something, but overall pretty unique. And then there's the front A-arm assembly. It does have the Corvette type spring up front going all the way across onto those points. So again, really interesting interesting parts trees we've got going on here which will add to the authenticity of your model. This parts tree includes that front fender support right here as well as our two rear fenders with the bat fins. There's the top of our dashboard and we also have our seats here which look very much like seats from a jet, like a jet fighter, F-16 or something to that effect. And if you guys flown one of those you might know what I'm talking about. Then we do have some mold marks under here, of course, which we'll have to clean up. But overall, I, I still like those ribs in here. Very cool looking. And then there's our rear bat fenders. This would almost be interesting on a pickup truck from the 50s. <laughs> Something super custom. And then there's the dashboard as well as the cover for our steering column, which would glue right into there. Again, a couple of those you need to remove, your little mold marks. But overall, I mean, the detail on here is quite nice. This parts tree includes body details as well as the suspension details. So starting off, we have our headlights here, the buckets, and the rear panel for our rocket to stick through, as well as the upper rear panel coming off of here. There's our inner fenders and outer fenders for the front of the car as well as our rear suspension and our front suspension, which features rack and pinion style uh, steering. Pardon me. Yeah, so overall really looks nice. We have those types of clips where the wheel will only go on, go on one way, so make sure if there's any seam lines that you have that absolutely smooth in there. There's our insides of those fenders and the bottom of the rear axle. So let's just turn this over for the camera. So again, you can see the nice detailing in here. Really uh, quite a cool looking sports car type of view. We have four shock absorbers in the back just for that nice nice uh, type of Indianapolis steering. Now turning this over you can see again the nice detail up underneath on those A-arms. Really really great work from Ravel. This looks like it'll go together quite nice. Here's our center bat fin for the top of the car that you can build either open or closed. And the detail in here is quite nice, looks like a bat wing. We also have our wheel inners. So again, bringing this up to the camera, you can see just the nice sculpting in there. If you turn it over, you also get the great sculpting, but there are mold marks all the way up on those fins. So you will need to sand them smooth if you want this open and for it to look really, really nice. Then again, you've got the little tabs down below, which you can easily clip off if you want just the single closed fin up the center. And here's our chrome parts tree, and you can see just how amazing this is. Look at that nice detail molded in here. And again, give it a wash of flat black just to make all this stand out. There's the rear jet engine, as well as the front discs for our wheels. And again, just look at that fabulous detail on here. Simply fabulous, honey. <laughs> again, really cool stuff. And this will make your Batmobile really shine. Now, looking underneath again, might be a few mold marks under there, but nothing to be too concerned about. Oh, and then right here we've got our center shift col uh, 
lever. And then there's our gauges right there. So again, really excellent work from Ravel. Here we have our glass components, our tires, and the decal sheet. So the glass components actually are a very light smoke tint color. You can see just how nice those windows are that they curve around in the front. You also have your headlights here. The tires are Goodyear GT radials, which came out in the, I guess, early 80s on a lot of the Ravel monogram type kits. Actually, more specifically, Ravel. And then here's our decal sheet. You can see the nice bat logos, which will go inside the center caps of the wheels, as well as our gauges here. So again, really excellent stuff from Ravel. Let's bring this up to the camera. Let's start with our decals. So again, you can see the bat symbol there, as well as on the gauges, the little needles and dials. Now you can tell that the uh, decal paper is yellowing in behind, you can see the white rings inside. That won't actually be there. They will be transparent, but again, uh, that's where the glue is not. <laughs> so we have two different sizes of tires here. One being the bigger outer tire and then the narrower front tire. Again, th these bigger tires came in a lot of the Ravel Dragster type kits. Not really the dragsters, but like the three-in-ones. So like your uh, Chevy Camaro, the 1979. These would be the back tires for that. And these would be the front of the Goodyear Radial GTs. So they're both Radial GTs, of course, and these were the types that were very popular in that early 80s type of period. But I think these would look better with uh, Formula One style tires on here. So again, these parts are quite nice and will look, make your Batmobile look really fabulous. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you can find one of these great model kits for yourself out there and build it up really, really nicely. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And until next time, happy model building! Tune in next week, Bat fans, as we explore the Batman and Robin Batmobile model kit by Ravel. Same Bat time, same Bat channel.